Hi, we're from Enorm. This is Eric. This is Ronald. And you're watching Live, Live Pro. Hello music friends, what's up? Marcel Huster here, the Dutch guy, and welcome to a new video here on Live Prague. And welcome to my review of The Unity of Two by Fuchs. I think that's the way to pronounce it. It is a German name. It's a German musician that founded this band, uh, Hans Jürgen Fuchs. Uh, he started out in the mid-90s when he worked together with his wife, a keyboard player, and they released a couple of albums. Uh, and he did a lot of other things as well, he was involved in other bands until he decided it was time to release his own music. And in 2012 he released his first album called Leaving Home. I reviewed that and I gave it a positive review because I definitely enjoyed that album. I did have some, well, some little points of criticism about a few things in the music, but outside that I thought it was a very nice album. At the same time I also noticed that in the time that passed after I reviewed this album and I got a copy of this one, I realized I hadn't listened to that album at all. So that is a little bit of a, a sign, you know, that it didn't last. It was a nice album to listen to but unfortunately it didn't stuck with me. So of course I was curious how this album would sound and how this album, what kind of feelings this one would bring to me. And I gotta say, I was very pleasantly surprised when I started to listen to The Unity of Two. Um, I gotta say, I heard some changes, I heard some things that uh, I didn't like in the first album that were completely changed in this album, which is very nice. Uh, the album is a little shorter, it's 64 minutes, so we have a few less tracks. I mean, the first album had uh, 16 tracks and we have here, as you can see, it still covers the whole backside of the album but still we have only 12 tracks here including one long one, uh, Prologue Part 2. He split the prologue up in two parts, I don't know why they do that but okay. Uh, and the last track of the album when you close your eyes is about 8 minutes and apart from that we have songs between 2.5 minutes and a little over 6 minutes. So reasonable lengths. Um, and when I started to listen to the album, there were a couple of things I noticed. Now, one of the things I noticed that I didn't very much like about Leaving Home were the guitars. They were a little too aggressive, too upfront in the mix, that, that after a few spins it kind of gave me a headache. Well, that sound is completely gone here, but there are, have been a few lineup changes, uh, also with Hans-Jürgen Fuchs himself, because he did a couple of things. There is a new guitar player in this album, there is a drummer this time, which is also uh, doing a lot of good to the whole sound and the whole atmosphere on this album but the guitars are much softer and that is what I like very much. This, this is a very soft and gentle album when you listen to it, very melodic. Uh, there's a lot of detail in the music, there are some moments in it that you almost have that medieval feeling also with the guitars, a lot of acoustic guitars as well, but um, a lot of Genesis atmospheres. Already when you start the album, the first track, Prologue Part 1, uh, you know, it starts off immediately with vocals and immediately it's like, wow, am I listening to Genesis? Is this a forgotten Genesis track? Because also the vocals resemble Peter Gabriel. So uh, that is something you will very much notice and I have to be honest, when I kept on listening to the album, as much as I liked it, I still had that idea, you know, hear this Genesis. At the same time you definitely have a lot of elements in the music that it shows that it's, it is not Genesis and especially the second half of the album there the influence goes away a little bit. It doesn't disappear entirely but it's not as upfront as in the beginning of the album so that is something very good. take out the booklet because I mentioned we have a bit of a lineup change here and well, as you saw on the cover and also the pictures in here these ancient classical bicycles very interesting um, now we have the booklet and also in the booklet well here we have Hans Jürgen Fuchs and again there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of photos in the, in the booklet there are lyrics and uh, there's some artwork as well see right here and there is a story. It is once again a concept album. Um, the 
The album Leaving Home was also a concept album, but based on a story that was a little bit more personal to him. This is more a sort of a literary idea about two friends that have, are completely different from each other and therefore kind of have to part ways. But after a while they come together and it turns out that although they are different and they had different lives, they still come back and they still have a happy life. And then, you know, that's the unity of two, uh, which is a story about finding happiness in life. So it is a very positive story and uh, that fits also the mood that the music brings. It is a very positive sounding album. As I said, there's a lot of detail in the music that I very much like. Also the lineup uh, is very good this time. As I mentioned, there is a real drummer. The Leaving Home album had programmed drums. Here we have a real drummer. But also Hans-Jürgen Fuchs does step a little bit back from a few things. For example, the drums, he didn't program them, but he had a drummer. He stepped a little bit back from the guitars and he stepped back from the vocals. We have two singers on this album. Uh, one of them is definitely sounding a bit like Peter Gabriel. The other one has a bit of a different voice, but at the same time, when you listen to the album and you wouldn't read the booklet, well, you really have to pay attention because if you just listen to the album, you might not notice that there are two singers. The, the, the vocals are somewhat similar to each other. Um, there is again violin and cello in the music, which I very much like. Uh, the guitars are really amazing. As I said, they are softer. There's a lot of acoustic guitar in it, but there are also some really fantastic guitar solos in it. Some more melodic electric guitar parts in it that really stand out. That is very beautiful. Uh, at the same time, despite the, the fact that the album is a bit shorter, there are a couple of moments that I thought, okay, get, get on with it. This is dragging on a little bit too long. And that happens to me, especially in the track number six, how many times? Uh, at a certain point, the chorus is kind of repeating and I, I say, okay, it's enough, move on please, you know? Also the track that comes after that, Doubt, that kind of gives you a sort of a, it's a really nice track, but it gives you a sort of feeling, you know, something is coming. The track is really building up to something. It becomes a little more cinematic, a little more grander. Uh, and you really think, okay, this is really moving towards something. But again, it just tracks on a little bit too long. But when then track eight starts, uh, your best maybe, it is a bit of an anti-climax because that is a really nice song, but just, you know, just a, a song with well, mainly focusing on the vocals, not, not as much on the music. So you expect something grand to come and then it kind of goes the other way around. These, uh, these things you still find in the music. So in a way, I still think 64 minutes is a little bit long. It, it really would be nice if it would be a little shorter, a little more to the point. Uh, that would do a little more justice to the album and keep the attention of the listener a little longer. But there are also some really beautiful surprises in the album because there was one track I was listening and I thought this sounds familiar. And that is track number 10, I am on my knees. I was listening to that and I thought, the whole atmosphere, especially when you listen to the beginning and you close your eyes, you will almost think you are listening to The Raven That Refused to Sing by Stephen Wilson. And the whole song kind of has that atmosphere, which is really nice, it's a very beautiful song. And the last track, the last track is, is the cherry on the pie. Um, I mentioned the Genesis influence, I mentioned that in the previous album Leaving Home there was a lot of Pink Floyd elements in it. That Pink Floyd element comes back in that last track when you close your eyes. But there is this really beautiful Floydian guitar part in it, that, that such an amazing guitar solo and wow, that is a fantastic way to end this album. So, you know, there are a lot of things uh, to enjoy in this album. There are a couple of things I just say, you know, maybe put it, make it a little shorter that it, you know, the flow of the album uh, becomes a little bit more natural, a little bit nicer without the idea that it's kind of dragging on. But as a whole, I think this is really a step up from the previous album. I really enjoyed this one and I'm pretty sure that this one will not go back into that collection uh, unplayed. I definitely will revisit this album because I really enjoyed listening to the album. sound in the music if you like your music to be melodic 
with a lot of detail in the music because that's what this one definitely has then I would recommend you listen to the Unity of Two by Fux. Definitely do that. And of course I am curious what do you think of this album or maybe of the previous album Leaving Home. There's a link somewhere here and in the description below where you can find my review of Leaving Home. Uh, let me know what you think of these albums. Um, and of course you can click subscribe uh, and keep in touch with all my reviews. And of course follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Please support the music by buying albums. That way you know, artists can keep on creating great music. Uh, and of course I hope you will see me at a new review.